Hi everybody, Peter of England. It's been a while since I last posted a video, but there are reasons for that. Um, mainly with the, the problems that have been raging in the UK, uh, people demonstrating on the streets, all types of um, accusations being thrown about the left and the right, and whether you were black or whatever your gender was, have corrupted a lot of the, um, the, the, the ideas and the ideology, the philosophy of society that we should be concentrating on, which are the most important. So whether it was then the Tommy Robinson scenarios in the UK, whether it was then the United States election, which I have prepared a video on, but to be quite honest, there's so many talking heads making various statements about what they think happened and why they think it happened. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's been pushed further down the line for me. It's not so important. What is important for everybody out there is We're Bank. There's the website for those people who are new to this channel or new to uh, the video content. www.wearebank.co.uk and today we are talking about something very important and something that is applicable worldwide. Um, We're Bank in March of 2025, which is only a few months away now, only four months away, should we say, um, will be celebrating its 10th anniversary. And so for all the naysayers out there, all those people from the FCA that tried to criticize We're Bank, all the shills and the trolls who said, oh, well, it'll never last, and Peter of England is, 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 is I don't know what, various things that shills and trolls say, you can guess. Um, the proof of the pudding is we're still here, we're still bringing solutions to individuals, and we have a, quite a, a vast array of products. So what I want to do today is try and clarify some of the new things that we think, and not think, but have been shown to be much more uh, effective for the, the situation or the scenario that people are now facing themselves in. Uh, I've put a uh, example here of what's called a, a bill of exchange. Now, many people will realize that when we first started out on We're Bank, most of the people that joined produced a promissory note. That promissory note was 10 years valid. And so for those people in 2020, sorry, in 2015, who produced a promissory note any time through 2015, next year it's coming up for maturity. And there is a video coming up which will explain what the good news on that means to you. Okay, so the 10th anniversary promissory note, one thing, but there was a reason that a bill of exchange was never dealt with when We Are Bank first commenced, or when it first, shall we say, opened it, its doors as a, as a banking concern. And that was really to do with the complexity of it and the, the difficulty for people to maybe follow or uh, have to do something uh, th themselves. So what I'm introducing now is something that's very much in your hands, very much your creation, very much in your pocket, and it is to do with this bill of exchange. So for all of those who, who, who aren't uh, quite conversant with these instruments, um, in the UK, the mother legislation is the Bills of Exchange Act 1882, and that's where I think no matter which country of the world you're in, whether you're in the United States or Canada, the Commonwealth countries, um, Europe, that's where you need to go to look at the founding legislation. That will also be found in what's called UNCTRAL, that's the United Nations Convention on International Bills of Exchange and International Promissory Notes. It's the same legislation that feeds right the way through. Okay, so why this is important is for you to understand that the, the bill of exchange is an unconditional order drawn up by the drawer instructing the payee, or could be the drawery, to pay a definable amount of money at a set date. It can either be payable on site or it can be payable as a delay. 
What I've managed to do here, uh, oh, and obviously it has to be signed. It has to be signed by the drawer. So as an example as to what this would be, let's look at um, commerce um, generally. Let's go back. Um, it doesn't matter whether we go back in time, but let's use the analogy that there is a, a buyer and a seller. The seller produces rolls of fabric. Um, so he is the seller of the fabric. There is an individual who makes suits and wants to buy that fabric. Um, that fabric then is bought from the buyer and the, sorry, uh, from the seller. And the seller gives a, a window of credit. Pay me in 30 days, pay me in 60 days, pay me in 90 days. That gives the buyer the opportunity to take that cloth, make whatever he might want to make with it, suits or trousers or clothing generally, and then sell it so he can then provide that money then to, to the seller. So it is a, a conditional guarantee and it operates over and above any other contractual obligation. And so that's very important because that's something that I want to emphasize why we are looking at it. And why we're looking at it is that in this day and age, the privateer corporations, yeah, these adhesion co corporations or adhesion contract wielding corporations that put these um, obligations onto you, mainly let's look at credit card companies, insurance companies, um, utility companies, gas, water, electricity, the council taxes, fines from courts. This instrument is an instrument par excellence for dealing with it because you don't um, dispute it, you offer to pay it. And this is why it's very, very important because the, the banking control police of the people who patrol the marketplace to ensure that the corporate giants and all masquerading as individual or non-associated private organizations with shareholders, but in turn um, owned by hedge funds, the main ones being uh, BlackRock, Berkshire, Fidelity State um, and Vanguard. Those are the main hedge funds that own Pepsi, and own Coca-Cola. They own all the different coffee companies. They own everything on the street collectively. Yeah. So you think you're dealing with multiplicity, but you're dealing with a unity. And so what I'm looking to show you here is that using this bill of exchange is the way forward because of two things. It's a binary, a binary, weapon against the corporatocracy. The corporatocracy are in effect the, um, the new world order agenda, the military industrial complex that Kennedy and Eisenhower and almost anybody who is in the world of um, of change has warned you about repeatedly, but this binary weapon that we are going to use against this establishment is done for several reasons. There are a lot of people out there, for example, who've joined various groups, whether that's, um, uh, I think, Simon Spaniard's You and Your Cash group, uh, whether it is people who've joined an organization called Matrix Freedom, um, around about 100,000 of them worldwide, this in essence is addressed to you because you've, you've managed to be struggled or convinced that a particular way of action would be meaningful and would be effective. And I can tell you now full on, it will not be. One of the main reasons for it not being allowed is that the only thing in a court of law when you are arguing for a, a, a case, 
uh, whether it is for non-payment, whether it is because you've run through a red light or parked the car incorrectly. The only thing that the judge needs to know that the clerk of the court or the clerk of the court of the crown in chancery, which is the official title of all the clerks in all the courts in all the world, is the one question, has this individual proved himself to be alive? So it's a proof of life scenario. And if that proof of life hasn't been made, then there is no way that you can function within this court in any material way. And the way to do it is beforehand, before the case gestates. And it's done with paperwork. So, the HMRC, UK Treasury, the IRS in the United States, they can't do a thing with your, um, your petitioning or they can't do anything with your um, UCC filings because they cannot recognize and will not recognize a living man. So if you're writing to them in any context, purporting to be a sovereign being, a living man, making demands that are outside the scope, then that cannot be heard. It will not be recognized. And if you want to know why, you need to go look at what's called 15 USC, United States Code 77 CCC, definitions. Go and have a look there. So that's 15 USC 77 CCC. Go and have a look at the definitions there of why you can't push your will through. And why all this talk about uh, OID, original offered discount. Why again it doesn't work because the HMRC and the Treasury and this trust that is operating globally won't allow you to knock on these doors, let alone open them. So all these people who were in Matrix Freedom, 100,000 of you all parked out there, what I would like to do is if any one of you knows any other one of you, then pass this through, and I will do and commence now a, a, a regime, a protocol, a method to show you how you can defeat uh, these... Uh, I'm actually using this, using this to defeat these debt burdens. So you've got to think cl more cleverly, not really just run at it. And there's a reason that what I'm doing now is asking everybody that's watching this video, so it doesn't matter whether you're already an existing We're Bank member, you need to go to wearebank.co.uk, look for the tab at the top, and go to bills of exchange. Uh, there is an explanation there of obviously what a bill of exchange is and how we would like to use it or teach you to use it. It also comes with, uh, these are just examples of the manuals, all the products that I put together, whether it was for Clausula Rebus Stantibus, whether it's Sacrament or the Lazarus Taxon and the uh, one for the bills of exchange. Um, the Bills of Exchange one is, again, an 80-page document which gives you all the methodology of using these. So these um, instruments, these financial negotiable instruments are not checks, okay? This is where there's been the pushback in the past. Anything that one had Weir Bank written on it was pushed back, typically people just trouting out the same old bullshit from 10 years ago now, the only comment that was ever made by the FCA uh, that Weir Bank should be used, uh, or you should proceed in dealing with Weir Bank with caution, which under the terms of the highway code is the exact same phrase they use for a green light at traffic lights. So 
they couldn't have given a better um, or a, a less severe condemnation, even if I'd have written the, the so-called put-down, which wasn't. But it's been, over time, uh, manipulated. It's been put onto Wikipedia, and it's been changed, and you would think that I was responsible for starting the next world war. Um, so for those people who um, can, can focus on this, this is really where we are going with this. And what the beauty of it is, is it is a completely separate um, instrument, a completely set, different set of uh, operational trade and commerce procedures different to the contract you may have signed. So, if you've signed a utility contract with your gas, water, electricity provider, if you've signed a contract with the bank, with the mortgage, if you've signed about a car leasing, car hire, rental, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. If it's operating in the world of commerce, it comes under um, your domestic legislation for your bills of exchange, and it comes in uh, for foreign bills, if it's obviously something you have to send to another country, it comes under UNCITRAL, United Nations Convention, okay, on international um, trade. So, what the beauty of this is, is it gives you time, and it has a series of terms of payment within a bill, which come under this here something called Lex Mercatoria or Law Merchant. And the Law Merchant goes back thousands of years, not just to 1882 with the Bills of Exchange Act. This is the basis of all trade right the way back to the time of the Babylonians, before them to the Hittites, uh, through the Sumerians, right the way back and back to ancient time. So these are the protocols. And for example, if you want to go and see how it should be interpreted, United uh, Uniform Commercial Code 1103 in the definitions basically says that the law merchant should be used as, as cooperatively and enforced as, as best as it serves the purpose for obviously both parties which talks mainly about honour, agreement, and the way that things should typically be conducted in the marketplace, not as they're being done now with adhesion contracts and forced no-choice um, so-called uh, contractual obligations. Go to the Bills of Exchange Act, parked secretly down in section 97, where it says under the title, I think, savings, that... Um, Law merchant will prevail in all dealings with bills of exchange. Okay, so in effect, what we're going to do with our binary weapon here is, regardless of what you think, maybe let's use generally the utility company as an electric company. It's been gouging the prices, it's been overcharging, so maybe for the gas, the water, whatever other utilities you take, or you disagree with the, um, the local state taxes or in the United States, or you disagree with paying council tax in the United Kingdom, what can you do about it? Well, um, you can refuse to pay, but they come after you or maybe take you to court with a, a possession or a liability order, as it's called. Um, maybe not legal, but they do it. Um, if you send... Um, a check, they may refuse it or say it didn't clear. They still therefore got you over a table. What we're going to do though is produce two things. One, something that stays with you and is used later as evidence of your goodwill intent to pay whoever that is a promissory note. So, first, that's first. That's what you create. First, create the promissory note and date it. 
then you create your box bill of exchange same date duplicated so what do you do now well what you do is you send the bill of exchange to the so-called creditor whether that is a credit card company, whether it's for a mortgage, whether it is for, does not matter. Anybody that is claiming as a privateer pirating corporation operating under what's called letters of mark issued from the crown. And if you don't quite know what I'm on about there, look at what's called the starship captains or starfleet captains of the 18th century to see how the raiding parties prior to the Napoleonic Wars profited greatly by just being allowed to raid and pirate any cargoes on the high seas um, in return for a kickback to the crown. It still goes on and you are the enemy ship. Okay, so this bill of exchange, you can focus in on it here. There is part one and part two. Part two is what's called terms of payment, which I'm not putting up because I don't have uh, enough room, but it's there for you anyway. And what we've got here is all the legal context of a binding agreement for you to pay. Now, you can do one of two things. You can either put at site or you can put the number of days. I would suggest you make it what's called a term bill. Once this then is delivered to the so-called creditor, which in our case is called the payee, yeah, the one who wants to be paid, there are three components, therefore. There's the drawer and the drawery, of which you, in this instance, because of the way I've created it, you are both the drawer and the drawery, the utility company, who supposedly is the seller, is now the buyer. The utility company is buying from you. What's it buying? It's buying the bill. I. It's buying money from you. Don't have to uh, dwell on that too much at the moment. All we've done is rearranged the, 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 um, the component parts. Okay, so when this lands with the, the, uh, the payee, okay, the one who wants the money, the utility company, then he's got proof now that the bill of exchange is valid, it's legal, it's enforceable, they can take it to court for payment. Okay, so what you've done though now is you've pushed the date from let's say, it being due next month and they bring in uh, court proceedings against you. And this is applicable for you even if your property is just about to be repossessed or if you've got bailiffs knocking at the door. You can still now offer this because it must be accepted under international and national trade agreement law. It's a fundamental building block of all commerce, all finance and trade transactions. They can't kick it back. All they can do when you send it to them is not accept it. And by not accepting it, for the people in the UK on the Bills of Exchange Act, look at section 43. It's called dishonor by non-acceptance. If a perfectly valid bill is refused then dishonor by non-acceptance adheres to the, 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 um, the person who is refusing it, let's just say, person being the corporation, and to that amount they are not allowed to proceed with the bill or chase the amount. So there is a facility obviously on the bill for within a short period of time let's say no more than 10 days, they must sign and accept the bill as accepted, return it to you for payment at a 30, 60, 90, even a 120 day stipulation. 
So that's bought you time now. They cannot legally take you to court because there is no dispute. You see that? They have a legally valid enforceable document. It's backed up by something they're not aware of because you've got this in your little drawer, in your room, as evidence of a willingness to pay. And that promissory note is going to be the thing that you use to pay. And I'm going to show you how by some things called QSIP numbers, Committee on Uniform Securities Investment Procedures or Protocols, linked something called the SEC, Securities and Exchange Commission, linked to Edgar, which is something you go and look up. These are going to be your proof here. And I will show you how that your signature is the be-all and end-all of all credit, all trust, all beneficial agreements and arrangements on the planet. And that means that whatever you sign, if it's unsigned, I ask you a question, how much is it worth? Put your signature on it, what happens? Now, do not get distracted, do not get confused by the constant barrage of bullshit that all these law firms like Marston's and the like put out, or ones in the United States saying, it's all free man, sovereign citizen, hocus pocus, pseudo-legal crap. It isn't. They're lying. We've got the truth, and it's a time of change. Okay? So, whatever you think about the regime that's taking over in the United States, in Washington, D.C., whatever you think about Starmer and his gang in the United Kingdom, who are nothing but atheistic, Bolshevistic communists, whatever you think of these people, the one thing that we can do is we can undermine their castle of refusals that particularly these arrogant, administrative, uh, heavy um, departments within these corporate fictions with their big fat assed secretaries sitting there doing nothing more than refusing it all, it's time for some what's called creative dissent. I would say we could use some creative dissent. I think I'll take this down now. Most of you will have been able to, to look at it. Uh, the main things as well that we add on to here, we've got section 15, section 43, section uh, 68, this is the Bills of Exchange, 1882, and this section 97. Um, the best way uh, of looking at these is um, on here to triply reinforce it. So there is no reason whatsoever for the, um, for the, the payee the utility company that you're going to offer the payment to for refusing it, we have, um, first of all, um, we have a, what's called a, a referee. Change my pen. This is a referee in case of need. This is non-acceptance. And this one is a, what's called a payer for honour. So what that does is those bolted onto here for your terms of payment do two things. One, that bill of exchange has to be signed, accepted and returned to you within a reasonable period of time. We say 10 days. 
If it isn't, then it is rejected for non-acceptance, which they have to prove in court what was the reason they didn't want the money. Do you see the conundrum that they have? They might think they're not going to get paid. They might think you're not credit worthy. But what they can even do is they can take this bill of exchange, totally valid on its face, dated with an amount signed by some identifiable person called the drawer, and they can get it signed on the back, endorsed, and pass it on to a financing or um, refractory corporation or company. So they can monetize it until its maturity date of 90 or 120 days, whatever you want to, to look at. So it's, it's money, it's legal tender, they can pass it on. Now then the utility company can't, all it can do is get paid. It can get paid on the face value. It might be discounted if the bill is, uh, electricity bill is for 500, they might get 400 for it off this guy here, but on maturity of the endorser, then he can come back to you and he can claim the full 500 or whatever. Okay, so on the face of it, they can't reject it. And even that, Backing up with this, you've even put a payer for honour. It's called a payer for honour super protest. If the utility company or the credit card company, the mortgage company, they come and protest it for saying basically we don't think you'll pay, you've actually put someone down here, which we'll deal with um, here, via here, you nominate someone who is willing to pay it, okay? It's not the be all and end all. You don't have to put a referee in case of need. You don't have to put a payer for honor, but it's belt and braces. It gives them absolutely no leeway to refuse a bill of exchange looking good on its face. And it doesn't matter whether they think the signature is fraudulent, and it doesn't matter whether they think it's been made by someone who doesn't exist. They still have the ability to accept it and go for recovery later. So what I'm trying to do to you is bring you onto a more intelligent way of boxing, boxing all of these corporatocracy um, people who would have you sitting on the side of the street, on the sidewalk, putting instruments together that, that will work and they can take you to court and this is the weapon here which contrary to what the likes of the matrix freedom type people or you and your cash maybe and uh, other people who are making propositions out there as to what and what you can't do you've got not to collapse the trust because what we're doing here is saying that your signature is either worth something or it's worth nothing. You can't have it both ways. Anything that you don't sign, has it got a validity? No. If you don't sign it, then they've got nothing, whether it's a, a, um, a, an agreement for a new, um, a new drive that you want putting in, a contract for a house, mortgage, whatever. They either have to forge your signature or you have to give it freely. Without a signature, why do you think they go to the trouble of forging them? Because they need it, okay? And so the signature is everything. And what you've got to remember, um, finally, try this little beauty here. Um, with a mortgage or whether it's a credit card agreement, whether it's a utility agreement, there are two things here. There's a security instrument and there is a security interest. It may be that the security interest 
is being held by the bank. Let's say in the case of a mortgage, that's the biggie. They might hold a security instrument, but you've got the security interest because what you fail to realize is that when they get that debt signed by you, it goes onto their books to increase their debt obligation. So the debt obligation goes up and plus plus a plus equals a plus. And so they've increased their negativity, but that makes the value of the bank. So you are the what's called holder in due course. You are the creator of these financial instruments. And time is changing now. It could be the time for us to make a difference, but we'll only do it by you coming together. We work with these instruments. And so they're available here. We're bank. Bills of exchange. Get a group of you together and let's start putting some type of creative descent. If I can find it. Creative descent, but with instruments that are, are ancient, are the bedrock of all trade, finance and commercial activity. And the legal departments won't really know what hit them when they start having to handle these because they can't, by law, take this to court until the, the, uh, the maturity date expiring, obviously, at the term. Because as long as it's good on its face, that's it. That's money to them. Nowhere else to go. So they have to wait. Even if the court case is on and you've produced it to the corporation that you supposedly owe to, that's fine. That's a separate total instrument and is, don't forget, what upends the court case, the court case is regardless of the breach, regardless of you violating the terms of the so-called agreement. No matter what they say you've done, it's got nothing to do with it. The bill of exchange stands as if someone came down from, um, or came out of, I don't know, from Mars and just presented this to them. They don't have to have any contact with the corporation, whatever, but it is a, an amount that is dischargeable on its face, in good faith, at maturity. Okay, so there's going to be a lots of pausing on this video. There's going to be a lot of uh, going back on it to look at some of this, this stuff I've mentioned. Share it with those type of people you think might find it of interest. For all you people out there that have been fluttering around with uh, Matrix Freedom, the 100,000 uh, of you um, that have all contributed to um, Ian's retirement fund, my conservative estimation is that he pulled in between, I would say, conservatively, 500 million. My upper area would be 750 million. Um, so he's done, he's done very well. Um, so whether you paid a couple or 3,000 to join, or whether you paid a little bit extra to get fast-tracked, I know some people who paid 20, 25, even 30,000, and I don't know what that was all for. Um, then um, I'm sorry, I don't like to give good people bad news, but um, now you need to change horses. And, uh, you know, th this is a pittance for what other people um, have been um, asking you for. This isn't a course, I'm not doing this over 20 weeks. You get the manual, you get the promissory notes with the bills of exchange already put together for you, available from the 25th of November. From then, you go. Best Christmas present you could ever give to anyone, and please pass it around internationally. I haven't done a video for quite some time. The one after this and then the one after that are going to be even more important and bigger 
culminating with um, a third or fourth concerning um, quite interesting matters. Thank you.